Welcome back students and today we're going to learn how to use Vengage to create an entire infographic. Now you've seen infographics on the internet and they're really big right now and a lot of bloggers use them to break up their blog posts. I went into a lot of this yesterday on my last blog post and so um, you can see that if you go to my YouTube channel under Mark Ellis you'll see make your blog post more readable using Vengage and PaintShop and I also use PaintShop Pro. I'll show you how that fits in later on. But today's challenge is to create an entire um, infographic using Vengage from top to bottom, a whole full-blown um, infographic that you can use on your blog and on your website if you so desire. So uh, what I have here is I've gone and I've pretty much fleshed out my uh, next blog post I do about three to four thousand word blog posts and so I have this section in here where I'm going to be talking about in this particular blog post you're telling a story from top to bottom it's much like advertising copy they use that quite a bit where they tell the story about how something didn't work you know my back ached I couldn't stand it anymore I tried this I tried that you go through this whole series of things and then you come up with a solution to the problem and, and so forth and how you discovered it so that's what I'm going to be outlining on my uh, infographic today how to create the storytelling blog post so that's what we're going to do today we're going to create a uh, infographic based on that now the first thing I want to do is create a background image and so I'm going to choose my background colors first I'm going to go over to uh, the menu on Vengage which is right here now before I go too far here you can open and close this uh, menu right here you can collapse it and reopen it if you want to. And then down here at the very bottom, they have a thing that says background. And so I'm going to pick my background color for my infographic. And you can get it right here. So I'm going to pick the color that I want for my background. I currently have white as my canvas. And I'm going to pick something in the green area that I kind of like. So I'm going to go over there and pick that. And you can kind of adjust it by going through here. I like this one, so I'm going to go with that. That's my background color. When you're done with the color uh, or a certain particular part of this menu, all you got to do is click it again, and it goes away. Now, originally, I was going to show you how to make a background, uh, like a wallpaper here, and there's a way to do that with these patterns they have on here. But right now, I'm going to go past that, and I'll come back to that later. Because if you create your background first, when you go to select something on here it will select your background continuously so you want to create everything that's going to be in your foreground or on your top layer first of a Vengage image okay uh, just a, a simple tip it's very easy to do without having a background yet so the canvas color will not uh, be selected for any reason I can't select that and it'll be you know as you can see it's not working so what you want to do is uh, you want to make sure you don't put any patterns or anything in the background first Create all your foreground stuff first and get it out of the way. Okay, so I'm going to create a little box here, and I'm going to drag it over. I like the rounded edges on these, so I'm going to create a certain color. I want something to be complementary color with this, so I'm going to go up, and I'm going to click on, um, once you click on the box, this will open, and you will be able to select a color that you want uh, based on this wheel here, and you just click inside the box. You can choose whatever you want to. Okay, so I'm going to go with this pastel brownish kind of tan color here, and I click off of that. So once you have your color that you want, you can shut that down. And then uh, the other thing I was going to do on this was I was going to put a border around it to make it look more interesting. So I'm going to select the rounded edges, of course, because we have a rounded box. And I'm going to pull it up to here, stretch it out just like I did before with the, the other box, and put it right here. And then you can change the color of that as well. Uh, since we're working in these weird earthy tones, I'm going to go with that and click off of there. And that's what you have. So that gives you a box with a border on it and looks pretty cool. Now I'm going to add my text to it. So anytime you want to collapse something on here, all you got to do is keep clicking on the same category that you open and it'll go away. Now I'm going to add my text. Grab a text box, pull it over here. Double click to start editing. I'll type in the title of my infographic here. And that will be called a Storyteller blog post. Uh, once again, I can go up into here, select the size of font I want to, to use for this. 
Uh, you can align it whichever way you want to, center, so forth. They've got all these different alignments. Okay, once I have the size that I want, and that's about the way I wanted to have this, I'm now going to add a, a little graphic on here to make it look cooler. Uh, also, you can pick the kind of font that you want to use. Uh, in this case, I would like to use, I want to use Times New Roman. Collapse my text uh, category and go down to where I'm going to look for some more icons. And I'm going to select something that has uh, to do with reading. So I'm going to type in book. And there's an image of somebody reading a book. I'm going to leave these in a black and white color so they can change the color of these at will. You can do it like that. Change my color. And there you go. I have already got my title up here. Now you'll notice that if I start to click on things in here, they'll move independently from each other, and I don't want to do that. I don't want my box to move or my border to move or my icon to move anywhere. I want to leave them all in one place. So what I want to do is I want to grab all of that, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and click on this that says Group. I'm going to group it, and that means it's all one unit now. And if I have to change the size of it, I can change the size of it. Uh, only problem with that is you cannot change the size of your text like that. So if you do something like this, uh, just bear in mind that you're going to have to change the size of your text before you change the size of your icons in your box. It just doesn't work that way. Okay, so I've got this about the size I want it, and I think it's kind of centered on the page here. And now I'm going to uh, create the other uh, portions of my graphic that I'm going to put on here. Now without reinventing the wheel, uh, don't try to go out and knock something totally original out of the park because you'll waste a lot of time doing that and if you're really busy with writing a blog or whatever, uh, you're just going to kill a lot of time trying to come up with something totally creative. I mean sometimes you can, but what I like to do is look at other people's ideas and on Vengage when you first go on there to open your first canvas up, you'll see all these pop up and these are templates of what other people have done. Now some of these if uh, you can change, if it says create on it you can change them and you can actually use them for yourself. I've done this before, saves a lot of time. But that, with the paid subscription, you get access to all of these and you can change any of them at will. Uh, for this one, I can't change it, so I'm gonna to try to copy it as much as I can. You can already see that I had put my title up there with my own little icon on mine. It looks like this, so it's kind of similar. Okay, now I'm going to add uh, some little doodads here and there to make it look more interesting. So I'm going to go over to where I have my icons, and I want to check, um, get rid of the one I had before and now I want to go into line and borders I'm gonna grab my line that I want to use here and something interesting I discovered up here when you click on a line you have different types of lines got different types of thicknesses you can use so you can change the thickness and you can also use dash dash dot dot dash any of these things here you want to do I'm gonna use this one looks kind of cool and um, you can also change shapes on the ends of them like this that looks kind of cool. So I'm going to do that. Now I want to change it to a color that's uh, compatible to what we're doing here. I like that one, so I'm going to use it. Make sure it's centered here the way I want it. Now I want to do is I want to copy it. So I'm going to go up here to go copy. So I have another one for the other side. So I want to flip this over. And what I want to do is I'll just use this doohickey here, grab it, and it'll swing it over like so. Once I have that evened out, I can put it on this side of my post. Once I have it in place and even, looks pretty much about the same as the other one does. I can match them up a little better. Uh, there you have it. You've got an interesting graphic on there. And now you can move on to other parts of the uh, infographic. Now, once again, I can grab all of this and uh, you know want to keep it all together, so I'm going to go ahead and group it. Now I can drag the whole thing around at will, wherever I want to put it, if I want to move it up further or so forth. All I can do is grab it and push it up. I can also change the size of this at will if I want to. Well, like I say, I have to go into the uh, letters to change those, so I'm going to leave them about like that. Now I'm going to add the other uh, different elements of my infographic. Drawing on one of the other Vengage infographics they have up there, I'm going to try to reproduce this in a procedural way here. So I'm going to have these as my headings, and I'm going to be drawing from my notes that I already have here for my blog post that I'm going to be using this with. So I'm going to be drawing from these different uh, headings. 
This will be real easy to do. All I have to do is go in there and grab my rounded box again if I want to. No, this time I think I'm going to do different. I'm going to backspace that. I'm going to grab the box like so and a square with squares on it so it'll be even. I'm going to drag this across. I've got my first subhead or subheader area online there so it'll look uh, interesting. And then I can change the color of that at will. Once again, uh, I can make it black or I don't want it to be too dark. So I'm going to make it about like that. And then the next thing I want to do is I want to reproduce this. So all I got to do is copy it, click on the uh, box, and then I'm going to hit copy several times. Okay, once I have all of those in place and they're kind of evened out and spaced, I can start adding my different subheads to this. But I'm going to also add a graphic to this first, so I'm going to put that in place first. I'm going to use the dash lines again, so I'm going to put them across here like so. Click on my line. I'm going to grab a dash line this time. Like this. Drag it clear across. I want these to be white. So you click on the little white box there. And then uh, do the same thing. Just reproduce the same thing you just did by copying. Putting them in place. Now you can see that I have my top part, my design, and how I'm going to have this all laid out. Now I can just lay the rest of my information in there. I'm now going to put my subheads in here, and I'm going to type those next. So once again, collapse my icon uh, category, go down to where it says text, grab text, drag it over, and I'm going to start to type in my first heading, which going back to my notes says something to the effect of the painful opening, which is what I want to do. So now I've typed in my heading there, and I'm going to go ahead and use Times New Roman for my uh, font once again. And then I'm also going to change the size of it a little bit, make it a little bit bigger, pull it down here. And all I need to do now is make it a white color. But as you can see, I've got a dilemma there. I've got those lines going through there. So how am I going to do that? Well, I can make it look even cooler. So I'm going to do one other thing here. I'm going to go up and I'm going to grab uh, from the icons, I'm going to grab a different type of shape here, oval shape. Let's try that. And what I want to do is I want to place it right about here and drag it across. This will give an interesting look to this. All right, so I've got my oval shape in place. And what I want to do is I want to make it a little bit different color. So I'm going to go ahead and grab another tan color, possibly like this one up here. I want to grab this. I'm going to go into the tan colors, and now I'm going to um, center it a little better. Okay, so now we have that, and once I have that in place, I can do something interesting. I can click on this image. Of course, I want to make it fit inside of here, and then what I want to do is go up and move this uh, to the back. You can move it all the way to the back, which will put it behind everything which you don't want to do because what will happen is it will be behind this brown line here. You can move it forward and backward using this. So I'm going to move it forward by one. So let's see here. And it, I, in this case I had to move it back by one. You've got to play around with those buttons a little bit sometimes to get them to do what you want them to. But once you have it in place, uh, it gives you a little bit more interesting looking image here. So now I'm going to do that to all of my subheads that I'm going to have for my text here. And as I did before, I'm just going to copy it about five times, and I'm going to move them into place. Okay, I copied, pasted them all in place, lined them up. That little green line tells you everything's lined up pretty good. Go ahead and click off of that. Now I've got all of these in place. Now I'm going to add my subheadings. Now to back up for one second, I moved this out of the way. Because why? Because I want to group all of this once again. So I'm going to go down here and grab all of that to make sure that I don't move something while I'm working on this because once you have it in place you don't really want to do that go up here in the group button now it's all together good got it all together there now I can just move it at will as one big unit if I have to move my letters back and fill in the rest of my subheads Okay, and you can see how this is shoring up really quick here. I've got my title in place and everything is here. And then the next thing I want to do is I want to add another box here. So I'm going to pull that over, drag it out. So give me another little area to put more information in here. 
And I'm going to go ahead and color this again, something similar, something like that. So forth. So now I've got an, another information area. Now, uh, rather than go into all of the uh, nuances of all of this, but what you could do after this is fill this in with your text. So if you go to my blog this week, you'll be able to see the rest of this infographic in all its glory. I'm basically just going to add text in here. Uh, there is one other thing I wanted to show you how to do, and that's add a background. And so that's what I'm going to do. Rather than waste your time watching me put a bunch of text in here, uh, it's pretty easy to figure out how to do. Just type it in. Uh, so that's easy. Uh, anything that you want to add on there. Now a little bit different than the icons, there's a category here called pictograms and they've got all the same headings as icons except uh, they're a little bit different and I'm going to show you you can create a pattern with these things so I'm going to use this pictogram here and I'm going to show you the difference now watch what happens when I drag it over you get all of these two different colors and so what that does is that's going to let us make a wallpaper for our background so let's go and I'm going to make a whole bunch of these um, first of all, I want to make them both the same color. So we're going to put them in the background, something like this. And then, uh, of course, you've got two colors here, but I'm going to match mine up. You can do this any way you want to. That's about the same, right? Okay, once you have that in place, you click on it again. You can make as many rows and columns of these as you so desire. So after readjusting my size a little bit and my colors, I uh, stretched it on down to where it covered the whole screen of this. You can see how I did that. You just grin it like that and you're going to go say, well, gee whiz, that's ugly. You can't really see what you've written or anything. Well, once again, I can move this backwards at will. So I'm going to move this to the back a little bit. So I moved it back one layer. I move it back another layer. You can see now it's behind everything after I've moved it back. Now, it's still kind of right back there, and I don't really want it to be predominant like that and then overbearing on the entire design. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, use the opacity here. Drag it down. Of course, you've got two colors here, so you've got to drag both opacities down. And you can see it makes it a lot lighter. And you can see the, the opacity reflected in these little doohickeys up here, these little buttons. So once you adjust it to where you want to, you've got your overall design. It looks pretty slick. You can add all the words you want to and even more stuff if you so desire. One last step before I forget is I was going to drop this into PaintShop Pro. And uh, the reason for that, unless you have a paid account with Vengage, it's difficult to get this image the way you want it as a, a file. So what I did was I would go and I would hit my control button on my lower left hand side of my keyboard and then the print screen button up at the uh, top right hand side. I would make a copy of it. Then I would take it over to uh, Paint Shop Pro. X8 is what I have right now. Anyway, I'll get, hit the edit button, go and hit uh, paste as new image. That gives you one image right there. So you've got a copy of it there. And then I would go back to Vengage, make a copy of the second one, second part of the image down here. Hit control print screen again with your two keys. Go back to Paint Shop, paste as a new image again. Now you've got two images, one with the top and one with the bottom. And it's very simple to paste them together. What you have to do is grab the selection tool here. And you're going to grab this part that you want, which is right along here. And go up and hit cut. You can do it that way. And then you can go edit paste as a new image. Actually, what you want to do is put it on a bigger screen here. So we're going to go to a new, create a, create a nice size uh, canvas for this to go on, hit OK. Then go edit, paste as new uh, layer. You've got the first part there. You adjust it as will. Go to the second image, do the same exact thing, select the part of it you need to have, cut it, and then once again drop it into Paint Shop Pro into the canvas that you had there. And you're going to go paste as new layer once again, 
So you got two layers, and it's just very easy to piece these together. It's very simple to do. Once you have it in place, you've got the whole image, and you can uh, have it and save it as a JPEG file. Go in here, crop it off exactly the way you know. Save exactly what you want of it, and hit the crop button, apply button, and there you have it. You've got the whole entire image without having to pay the twenty dollars a month. I mean, that's just one way of doing it. Uh, now, if you do this a lot, you might want to go ahead and uh, purchase Vengage and, and get on a monthly subscription if you do this sort of thing all, all the time. Highly would recommend it. It's worth it. There's a lot of other things that are on Vengage that you can use. Uh, but for right now, if you're on a uh, budget, then you might want to go this route. It's an extra step. It's an extra hassle. But to uh, pay $20 to get around that might be worth it to you. Anyway, uh, make sure you go over to my blog and check out to my uh, website uh, it's at www.elmocopy.com and you can read a lot of these uh, articles I've already got on there most of them are three and four thousand word ones are great detail uh, to do with blogging and with copywriting and copywriting as it applies to blogging and blogging as it applies to copywriting anyway I hope you got something out of this um, uh, lesson today and out of this video and uh, if you have any comments go ahead and leave them in the comment space or also go to the website put some comments down about my articles I would really appreciate it God bless and have a great day